hope all of you are fine. Let me check the audio and video before I begin the class. Okay, I guess I'm right. Okay, the audio seems to be fine. Okay, so let us begin in this class. We shall be doing a few current affairs which are important from exam point of view. So about me, my name is Hamid Kumar. I'm a civil engineering graduate of the SSCCO, ESIC UDC, LIC ADO. Going forward, there is a quantitative aptitude marathon that is a free scholarship test. Free scholarship test. And it is tomorrow, that is 23rd January at 12 p.m. You'll have to answer 30 questions in 15 minutes. And questions are based on recent levels of SSC. Questions are created by top educators. You get detailed video solution by top educators. Get real time all India ranking and practice and enhance your press with an academic combat. You get to win from a scholarship poll of 1 crore rupees. So, how do you enroll for the test? All you need to do is there is a link in the description box below. Click on the link, register yourself using the invite code MJ10. Uh, this is going to be the unlock code. MJ10 is going to be the unlock code. Use this, unlock this test, and take the test tomorrow at 12 p.m. Answer these 30 questions in 15 minutes. And if you are the topper, rank 1 to 3 will get 100% scholarship. Rank 4 to uh, 10 will get 75% scholarship. Rank 11 to 50 will get 50% scholarship. Rank 51 to 500 will get 25% scholarship. 501 to 1000 will get 20% scholarship. Going forward, here you can have a look at iconic features. You'll have priority in doubt solving and priority in live class. Priority in doubt solving will be in the Anacademy app via Ask a Doubt feature. Priority in live classes will be in the Anacademy app via Raise a Hand feature. Going forward, what is Ask a Doubt feature? How do you use it? You go to the Doubts and Solutions feature on your home screen. Click on Ask a Doubt and upload your doubt image. Crop the image and highlight the question. Choose the subject that the question falls under. Okay, going forward, here are a few test series which are available for free and a few paid tests as well. You can attempt this test for free and a few paid tests. So you can attempt this live and record it now. Just give me a minute. Hello? Manan? Ah, class is in here. Bandra. Ah, Bandra. Going forward, raise the hand feature. What is raise the hand feature? Sorry, dear candidate, it was an important call. I have to take it up. Uh, what is raise the hand feature? Raise the hand feature is available for plus subscribers. So, what is raise the hand feature? You can talk to your favorite educator in the middle of a live class. You get that option. You can raise your hand and talk to your favorite educator in the middle of a live class. Online is much better than offline. And about SSC subscription for two years is 7,800, for 12 months is 6,500, for six months it is 5,400. All you need to do is you need to use my code. My code is MJ10 and you'll get 10% off. And for two years, it is going to cost 7,020 rupees. Going forward, reporting in features is an opportunity for all learners to report any inappropriate content in the video. And if you're the first one to report any inappropriate content, you can claim your price. So report any inappropriate content using the form in the description. So uh, let us have a look at the uh, headlines uh, about India uh, headlines. Uh, PM Modi to host the first. The India Central Asia Summit virtually on Jan 27th. So it's going to be India Central Asia. So Central Asian countries, that is uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, all these countries are going to participate. Five Central Asian countries are going to participate in the summit. We'll have a look at uh, this in detail in, uh, in the later course of this video. Three Navy personnel that killed an explosion on board INS Ranveer in Mumbai and Rajasthan BSF will conduct Operation Sardhava. BSF is Border Security Force. It is one of the five paramilitary force. And uh, regarding Operation Sardava and Operation Dardava, I'll be telling in detail further on. So Operation Sardava, that is conducted during the cold season. Okay, during winter season will happen between Jan 23rd to 28th. And 11 cities selected as the winners of the streets for people, challenged by Union Ministry. Uh, so 11 cities are selected as winners of streets for people, challenged by Union Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry announces, announces winners of Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge and Cabinet approves extension of tenure of National Commission for Safai Karmacharis for three years. A National Commission for Safai Karmacharis. This is a statutory body. It is a statutory body. Okay. I'll tell more on this in the later course of the video. And 
also internet panel on languages host Vijay Shekhar Sharma who is the founder of Paytm founder of Paytm as the ambassador going forward cabinet committee uh, cabinet approved the inclusion of 1500 crores in india renewable energy development agency limited and uh, sebi launches a mobile app called sarthi sarthi what is the sarthi app more about this in the later, later course of this video to create awareness among investors about the basic concepts of securities market and hcl signs a contract with mauritius for export of advanced light helicopters hcl is hindustan aeronautics limited so this has signed a contract with mauritius to export advanced light helicopters and expert deliberate on widening the scope of india israel industrial research and development and technological innovation fund and dilip sangani is elected as the chairman of ifco that is indian farmers fertilizer cooperative dgca that is director general of civil aviation extend ban on international flights till february 20 going forward uh, world headlines Indonesia passed the law to relocate its capital to remote Borneo. So the capital of Indonesia is Jakarta. Present capital is Jakarta. But Jakarta, there is a uh, report saying that Jakarta is going to be submerged because of climate change. So they are going to change the new capital, and the new capital is going to be Nusantara, Nusantara. And this bill was passed by the parliament, and the prime minister of Indonesia is Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo. uh that is about it and the french senators vote to ban hedge cards in sports competition and pfizer chief albert borla with 1 million genesis prize for vaccine development robert metsola of malta became becomes eu parliament's new president robert metsola youngest uh, president or youngest person to be eu parliament's president and uh, satur uh, saturnino di la Twenty of Spain said to be world oldest man. He dies at 112 years. Please remember the name Saturnino de la Fuente of Spain. And sports: Pakistan Babar Azam has been named the captain of ICC men's T20 team of the year. Going forward, the first topic of the day: global cyber security outlook. So, World Economic Forum. Remember, World Economic Forum has released this report called Global Cyber Security Outlook 2022. You know. uh after the pandemic the uh, cyber space has increased more and more number of people they are getting digitized they are into digital transaction so with the as the number of digital transactions are increased as people are getting digital knowledge there is also an increased risk of cyber security so uh, world economic forum has published this report and in 2021 ransom at aware uh, attack they were increased by 151% a successful organization that reached the cyber security spent 3.6 million us dollars going forward about the incident according to the report the following two factors have the highest influence on cyber security one is automation and machine learning 48% and remote and hybrid work environment 28% what are the reasons the increase in cyber crimes was mainly because of increase in global digital economy going forward uh, let's have a, this this is not important from the exam point of view but yes For your information and to keep it interesting, data created in one minute. In one minute, five hundred hours of YouTube upload is done, and one ninety seven emails are sent. All this in one minute, and in two million two million Tinder swipes, and one point six million US dollars amount spent online in one minute, and two million Twitch views, which is basically uh, used for game gamers, and twenty eight thousand Netflix subscription in one minute. Six lakh ninety-five thousand Instagram stories shared in one minute. Nine thousand one hundred two LinkedIn connections made in one minute. And sixty-nine million WhatsApp messages sent in one minute. And five thousand TikTok downloads. So, if you look at the concern, forty-two percent infrastructure is broken down by cyber attacks. Twenty-four percent cyber attacks are identity theft. Twenty percent cyber attacks are ransomware attacks. And ten percent of the personal attacks are lost. And fifty-five percent of the organizations in the world they were affected by cyber security in 2011. These are the statistics. These are not important from exam point of view, but to keep the class interesting, these statistics I have included in this video. Going forward, cyber security solutions. The following factors should be considered while creating cyber security solutions: percentage of digital transformation made by an organization, considerable amount greater than transformation should be spent on cyber security. third party software attack malicious attack regulatory requirements board direction media attention and shift towards remote what are the lagging areas prioritizing cyber security in business decisions acquiring leadership support for cyber security recruiting and retaining cyber security staff 
going forward to the next topic bsf that is border security force uh, it is one of the five paramilitary forces five paramilitary military forces okay this is under ministry of home it is not under ministry of defense it is under ministry of home affairs all the paramilitary forces are under ministry of home affairs and bsf was established in the year 1965 and the present uh, dg please do tell me who is the present dg of bsf in the comment box below which is important because the dg was changed last year in the month of september september 2021 there was a new dg so who is the new dg of bsf please do uh, let me know in the comment box below and bsf launches its operation sardawa there are basically two operations conducted by bsf which are important one is sardawa and dardawa Sardhava is conducted during the winter season and Sardhava is conducted during the summer season. What is this Operation Sardhava? Operation Sardhava, this is to increase the surveillance in the Pakistan border because of infiltrations. You know, uh, ceasefire violations by Kashmir has decreased, uh, by Pakistan has decreased. So since the ceasefire violation by Pakistan has decreased, they would resort to proxy war. What is proxy war? Sending Pakistani militants uh, without uh, without tr uh, trying to showcase that they are sending, I mean, uh, in an immutable manner, sending them through the border, the infiltration, border infiltration by militants is what is proxy war. And Pakistan is very much involved in this one. It is usually launched in Rajasthan border, especially in Jaisalmer region. It is a regular annual exercise that is launched in the month of January. And about the operation, Operation Sardawa is conducted during winter and Operation Garmawa is conducted during summer. I've already told you this. These operations are held to control the infiltration in the border. During the winter, thick fog blocks the vision, uh, thick fog, it will block the vision in the border area. This scenario is highly advantageous for the terrorists to cross the border. It is essential for the security forces to stay alert during this season. BSS conducts Operation Sardhava during winter for this reason. This year, Operation Sardhava it is to be conducted between January 23rd and January 28th. The operation is also launched to keep Fox's eye and enhance the security before the Republic Day celebration. Going forward, how is the operation Sardawa conducted? The officers and personnel stay closer to the border. Frequent patrolling are conducted. The intelligence wing is kept on active mode during the operation. The number of soldiers deployed in the border is increased. The soldiers patrol, soldiers patrol the areas near the police station with advanced weapons. Also, the Javans monitor the border areas in cameras. Food point tracking, they also check on pedestrian interviews. Going forward, what is the significance? The ceasefire violations have dipped in the borders recently. During such times, Pakistan army refuses proxy wars to attack India. I've already told you what is proxy wars. So, since the ceasefire violations have decreased, Pakistan will resort to pro uh, proxy wars. So, that is the reason border security force, which is guarding the Indo Pakistan border from Rajasthan, from the desert area of Rajasthan. Till the highest point where army is deputed, that is Sayat in Malaysia, it is the duty of BSF to uh, guard it, to guard the border. Therefore, it is essential for the border security force to stay on high alert during this uh, season because one is there is fog, so there can be infiltration by Pakistani militants. Also, since the ceasefire violations have decreased, it is the duty of BSF to in increase their surveillance in this region. Uh, this is why Operation Sardawa is important. Operation Garmawa, uh, this is held during the summer. This is held in Rajasthan. The infiltration cha uh, chances are high during heat wave conditions. There is, apart from cold wave, there is also heat wave. So you can understand the extremities of uh, weather conditions in which BSF will function. Going forward, this operation like Sardawa is conducted by border security force. It is usually held in the month of May or June when the heat waves are extreme. It reinforces and strengthens the border security force and its activities in the border. Going forward to the next topic, SEBI, Sarsi Mobile App. Please remember the name of the app. It is Sarsi Mobile App. This is especially important for candidates uh, preparing for banking examination. The Securities and the Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI, launched the Sarsi Mobile App. The application provides information about security market. It is highly useful for investors. You know, uh, people are resorting to uh, investment in securities, the reason being the uh, returns they get on FDs, that is fixed deposit, is very less when you compare that uh, with the uh, securities, that is when you invest in shares and stocks or in mutual funds. And about this application, that is the application, 
please remember the name the name is rt application this application provides explanation about mutual funds its working trading and settlement kyc that is know your customer processes development in the market etc also the application includes previous reversal mechanism the application uses both hindi and english it is available for both ios and android users in future the app will be made available in local languages as well so for why was this application launched in the first place recently the number of individual investors entering the market is increasing the app was launched to help these individual investors also the new investors are using smartphones to do trading thus they are being assisted through mobile as most of the people who are investing in securities that is they are investing in shares stocks or mutual funds or sips they use mobile yeah definitely and people like me yeah we definitely use mobile as security markets the security markets are those markets where securities are brought and sold so what is security market please remember security market is that market where securities are brought and sold and securities are nothing but guarantees the securities are forfeited when the concerned person fails to repay the money in simple terms securities are tradable financial instrument as i said securities are nothing but stock shares mutual funds sips all these are securities that raise capital in public and private investment so what happens uh, when you invest in securities for example you invest on a company x you are investing on a company x so you are increasing the capital of this company so that uh, the company is getting more capital so it is getting more investment so it can invest more and get more return once it gets more return who will get the dividends of that return people like me who have invested on this company x will get more return so this investment this can be a public investment or in private company that is what is public and private market going forward individual investors are increasing in india the individual investors have been increasing their share was 39% in 2020 in 2021 it has increased to 45% according to national stock exchange data going forward to the news let's see okay about the sarti sebi sarti mobile app why are individual investors increasing the interest rates in banks they are reducing yeah we all know that and also the fixed deposit rate uh, fixed fd rates they are vary between 2.92 and 5.4 percent which is really less i would say on an average anywhere close to 20 percent for annum return is good for me thus the returns for such investment is very low there is increase in global liquidity also people are spending more time at home because of pandemic the market capitalization at bsc has increased by 1.8 times it is increasing uh, it increased by 1.6 times in russia the other countries with significant increase are china france south africa it is evident that market capitalization is higher in india as compared to other countries going forward to the next topic azadi ke amrit mahotsav se swarnim bharat ke or so from platinum jubilee from platinum jubilee we are heading towards 100 years 100 years of independence in the year 2047 we are going to have that so azadi ke amrit mahotsav means festival of independence that is platinum jubilee swarnim bharat ke or means towards golden india the program is azad azadi ke amrit to golden india it began the program began on jan 2020 2022 it was started by prime minister narendra modi and about the program it marks the year long celebration of azadi ke amrit uh, dedicated by brahma kumari under the initiative 15000 events and 30 campaigns are to be held during the event ricky reyes the grammy award winner is to decide or uh, is to dedicate a song to the event the program are to be held in hospitals and medical colleges it will focus on well being spirituality and nutrition it will also include conferences on doctors cancer uh, screening and medical care going forward there are seven initiatives the initiatives are green initiatives under nera bharat swachh bharat self reliant farmer initiatives under atmanirbhar bharat uh, and about women flag bearers of india and a cycle rally on undiscovered india and motor bike campaign on unite india and initiatives under swachh bharat abhiyan going forward about brahma kumari it is a spiritual organization headquartered at mount abu it is dedicated to the world renewal and personal information it was established in 1937 
the organization has now spread to more than 130 countries and self reliant farmer initiative 75 farmer empowerment campaign 75 sustainable yogic farming training program and 75 farmer conferences about the peace bus campaign it will cover 75 cities it will exhibit the positive transformation of the east going forward there is also a cycle rally to be held in different heritage uh, sites it will focus on connection between environment and heritage and also a motorbike campaign it is to be held between mount abu and delhi mount abu is in the aravali range aravali range yeah so do tell me in the comment box which are the states that are in the aravali range it will cover multiple cities and about Swachh Bharat, it includes awareness campaign, cleanliness drive, and community cleanliness program. Going forward, what is the importance in Indian context? Immortality is not confined to bodily existence. It is embodied experience of oneness with the cosmos. All initiatives will ultimately focus on this principle. Going forward to the next topic, speech for people challenge. The Speech for People Challenge is an online event organized by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. The results of the event were announced recently. The Speech for People Challenge, along with the India Cycles for Challenge, brought in uh, changes to make the roads cycle friendly, walking friendly, and child friendly. The Speech for People Challenge focuses on making speech walking friendly. Going forward, the result around 11 cities have won Speech for People Challenge Award. They are Aurangabad, Bengaluru, Gurugram. Uh, Kochi, Nagpur, Pimri, Chinchwad, Pune, Udaipur, Koima, Ujjain, and Vijayawada. Ten cities have won Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge. They are Bengaluru, Hubli Darwad, uh, Indore, Jabalpur, Kakinada, Kochi, Koima, Rurkela, Vadodara, and Varangal. So, I'm forward about the Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge. Nurturing Neighborhood Challenge focuses on creating a childhood friendly neighborhood. These cities will now enter into the next level. Going forward for the Smart Cities mission, the challenges were anchored by the Smart City mission. They are in line with national urban transport policy, focused on shifting the trends of city roads from car-centric to people-centric. Going forward, what is Streets for People Challenge? New innovation, innovative plans were created by participating cities. The plans focused on prioritizing pedestrians. That is what is Streets for People Challenge. More than 1,800 designers participated in the challenge. The winning cities received 50 lakh rupees. The Institute for Transportation and Development provided technical support to participating cities. What is the way forward? The state shall bring in healthy street departments. They will also bring in institutional resilience. And about the KCR kit scheme, the scheme was launched by Telangana government. What is KCR? KCR means nothing but the name of the Chief Minister of Telangana, that is K. Chandrasekhar Reddy, K. Chandrasekhar Rao. Uh, it is a welfare scheme launched for mother and children. About the scheme, after delivery, the mother is provided with KCR kit. The kit consists of 16 items that are essential to keep the newborn clean and hygienic. The kit supplies would suffice the needs of the baby for three months. The kit has diapers, napkins, toys, mosquito nets, baby powder, baby oil, baby soap and clothes. It was launched in 2017 by Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao. In 2017, the state government of Telangana allocated 605 crores for this scheme. Uh, there is a recent news that there is corruption in the scheme happening. The scheme has been facing accusation of corruption lately. And why is this accusation? The accusation is because this scheme is provided only for deliveries that happen in government hospitals, that is public hospitals. But this scheme has been given to those who are born in private hospitals as well, which is not included. The scheme is only for babies in government hospital and has not been extended to private hospitals. But the implementing officers, those officers who are implementing it, have fraudulently included private hospitals under this scheme. Going forward, why is this scheme? Why was the scheme launched? The scheme was launched to reduce infant mortality rate in the state. The current infant mortality rate of Telangana is 28 deaths per thousand life births. The state uses Aadhaar-based mother and child tracking system to track the health of mother and child. They are tracked at every stage of pregnancy. Going forward, who are not eligible? Mother with more than two children are not eligible to receive the kit. Also, the kit is not provided to mothers from other states. Apart from Telangana, mothers from other states, they are not eligible for this one. The mother should have an Aadhaar card belonging to Telangana state. It is not provided to mothers delivering babies at private hospitals. Going forward, 
Uh, money provided under the scheme, along with the kit, the Telangana government also provides Rs. 30,000 for baby girl, girl baby, and 12,000 for boy baby. Rupees 3,000 is provided after the mother completes two checkups, which is within five and a half months. 4,000 rupees is added after baby delivery. If it is a boy baby, then Rs. 4,000 is given. If it is a baby girl, then Rs. 5,000 is given. After completing first immunization, 2,000 rupees is provided. 3,000 rupees is provided after completing this second immunization. So look at the amount that the government is giving. Definitely, this is not important from exam point of view. If there are candidates from Telangana who are preparing for Telangana State Public Service Commission examination, then this is very important from an exam point of view. Next point, next topic, India Central Asia Summit. I have already told you the Central Asian countries, five Central Asian countries I told you. If they are going to participate in this India Central Asia Summit. The five Central Asian countries include Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyz Republic. And about the summit, this is the first India Central Asia Summit. The summit is to be held virtually. India has been planning to hold the summit since Modi's visit to these Central Asian countries in 2015. And during the summit, the leaders are expected to exchange their views on international and regional issues. They are expected to mainly focus on security issues. Going forward, what is the significance of the summit? The countries share their boundaries with Afghanistan. Uh, we all know Afghanistan has been taken over by the Taliban as soon as the US left Afghan soil in August 2021. This left Indian development work in Afghanistan incomplete. Uh, uh, you must know by now that India is constructing a parliament in Afghanistan. Apart from this, India is also building dams in Afghanistan, two dams, namely. Salma Dam and Shatu Dam are important. These are investments that India has provided for Afghanistan, and all these have come to a standstill as soon as Taliban has taken over. Also, the Indian investment made towards the development of Afghanistan went in vain. Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyz Republic share their boundaries with China. India is now involved in a 21 month standoff with China. You know, India has a standoff with China. This has I mean, the duration of the standoff is 21 months now. Going forward, the inference, what do you understand by this? What is the conclusion? The summit reflects the growing engagement of India with Central Asian countries. They are extended neighborhood of India. About the India-Central Asia dialogue, India-Central Asia dialogue is held annually. The dialogue is held among the ministers. The first dialogue was held in 2019. India and the Central Asian countries signed high-impact community development projects in 2020. To Central Asian countries, they are negotiating with India about the latter line of credit of 1 billion US dollars. Going forward, the third dialogue was held in December 2021. During the dialogue, the countries ple pledged to increase their cooperation on forces. These are the forces commerce, connectivity, capacity building, and contact. India Central Asia Business Council. It promotes business linkages, mutual investment, and understanding of business regulations. The last and the second council meet was held in 2020. The next and the third council meet is to be hosted by Uzbekistan in 2020. Going forward, India Central Asia trade. The trade between India and Central Asia is around 2 billion US dollars. On the other hand, the trade between India, uh, China, and Central Asia is around 100 billion US dollars. So you can see the difference here. India needs to build its trade relations with the Central Asian countries. Going forward to the next topic. It is important from exam point of view, that is RBI's Digital Payments Index. RBI has recently released Digital Payments Index. According to the index, the digital payments in the country have increased by 40% in September 2021 as compared to March 2021. The index will measure the online transaction. Uh, the index measure uh, of online transaction was 304.06 in September 2021. Uh, it was 270.59 in March 2021. In September 2020, the online transaction measure was 207.74. And please do remember the base year. Base year is March 2018. This is the year. So in this year, it is considered 100. The uh, base is considered to be 100 points. And the index is released in the month of March and September. Going forward, base year of the index, I've already told you, it is 2018. This means that the score of the index for March period was set to 100. The index value has increased by 2.7 times within three years. And formulation of the index, the index is formulated based on five parameters. They are payment enablers, 25%, consumer sensitivity, 5%, payment performance, 
supply side factor 15% and demand side, uh, demand side factor 10%. The index is published in semi annual basis, that is, it is published twice in a year, and it was first released in March 2021. Going forward, what is the inference of this? The payments to digital payments have increased by 39.4%. Of course, most of the payments that we do on a daily basis are digital payments these days, especially the ones that I do. Most of them, and people like me who are uh, more into tech. So uh, the we do use digital payments more, and the UPI, that is Unified Payment Interface, in the second quarter has increased by 82%. In second quarter, around 19 banks joined the UPI system. The number of point of sale terminals increased by 13% in Q2 as compared to previous quarter. For the other publications by RBI, the other reports that are submitted by RBI, report on warring exchange results, this is published twice a year. Monetary policy report, this is published twice a year. Financial stability report, this is published twice a year. Going forward, inflation expectation survey of households, published four times a year. Consumer confidence survey, this is published four times a year. How did the digital payment increase? The payment increase mainly because of key measures made by NPCI, that is National Payments Corporation of India. NPCI had given approval for WhatsApp to go live with UPI. As soon as this was done, the user base increased to two crores. Payment infrastructure development fund was created. It was created to increase point of sale deployment. Going forward to the next topic, TOI 2180, new Jupiter-like exoplanet. So a new planet has been discovered, which is similar to Jupiter. A group of scientists have recently discovered a new planet. The planet is of the size of Jupiter. The new planet is 379 light years away from the Earth. It is 105 times denser than the Earth. The planet is named TOI 2180B. Uh, about the planet, it takes 261 days for the planet to orbit its star. The surface temperature is 76 degrees Celsius. It is not only denser than the Earth, but also denser than Jupiter. The planet is made of helium and hydrogen. The planet has rings and moons. It dims by half a percent in 24 hour period. Why is the planet unique? The planet the new planet takes 261 days to revolve around its star. The long period of revolution is not usually found in exoplanets. Also, the revolutionary period is shorted for itself. The planet is three times the size of Jupiter. Jupiter takes 12 Earth years to complete one revolution around the sun, and Saturn takes 29 Earth years to complete one revolution. Also, the new planet is warmer than the outer planets in our solar system. However, as compared to other exoplanets discovered so far, it is abnormally chilled. And who discovered this TOI 2180? That is a new planet. It was discovered by Tom Jacobs. He discovered the exoplanet with the help of NASA telescope. Tom also used the help of TESS to discover the planet. TESS is transitioning exoplanet survey satellite. And it is an explorer program of NASA. And that's it for today. I hope you like the class. If you like the class, please do like, share, and subscribe to the class. We will catch up in another video. Until then.